Hi, welcome back to a continuing work in progress. Today we hope to complete the project here in order to bring you another designer's landscape. You may recall, this is not your average home site. Uh, about 16 acres altogether. Of course, we're not improving that much. But we came in with some trees, some live oaks in the front gate or entrance area, even around the house. Uh, we installed some pears, as well as some magnolias here in what'll be a savanna garden. Well, since then too, we've come out, we've drawn these bed lines and installed some Bermuda turf. A nice, compact, low turf grass, fine-tuned, and so, Really, actually, we're ready to go to our next part. That is our landscape plant material, our trees, and some of the patio sections there. So, uh, let's review a few other beds, what they look like uh, before we even go shopping for plants. I know the homeowners are happy to at least have the turf grass installed because uh, it does help keep the dust and dirt down from around the house itself. You can see our bed lines and what we have to fill now. What do you say we go to a nursery and find out what varieties and plant types we're gonna bring back here to the site? Friends, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a Chip Colbreth of Monrovia. Uh, Chip, this is a dangerous place for a contractor like me. You have so many beautiful plants. Uh, tell us, starting with this crepe myrtle. Well, Gary, this is a selection that we made because of the beautiful red foliage. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a, a nice bloom set to it, so you get that benefit, but uh, more maroon type foliages for the south are things that we want to include in landscapes, and this plant really uh, brings out all the attributes that we're looking for, especially in uh, in our Monrovia type products. I mean, I, I look for contrast as a contractor myself so that everything's not green, but I, I see this beautiful burgundy. It, it kind of looks like a barberry almost. It's exactly right, and, and that's one of the primary reasons that we made this selection is, is barberries are tough for the South, but you need that red color. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for those products that work and provide that red color and do well in the landscape uh, in the and, South. And so as a crepe myrtle too, though, uh, with the blooming, that's just more bonus. Just a tremendous bonus, and, and uh, not too many products do that. Chip, this is a beautiful color here. Gary, this is probably one of the best plants that we brought to the market in a long time. This one's called, this is a rose, and it's called Knockout. And the primary reason it's called Knockout, because if you look at it, it is really is a knockout. I believe you. Yeah, really beautiful. Uh, advantages to this. This is a shrub rose, you say? Exactly. Uh, Obviously, you've got tremendous color all summer long, which is which is a tremendous benefit. All summer. And this rose is what they call self-cleaning, in that with the small number of petals on the bloom, it the the blooms will as they tend to fade, they'll drop off very quickly. So you don't really see that in the landscape, and the new the new bloom buds will come on right behind. Okay, them. because I see a lot of blooms, but I don't see a lot of deadheads, as you call them, uh, old buds that need to be cleaned off. And actually, in this particular plant, you can prune it to create more blooms, but you don't have to deadhead, which is really one of those things that tends to be a pain in the Everybody garden. Everybody talks about low maintenance. That sounds like it's that's, that's low the maintenance there. Um, I see some Nandina here. Maybe you can describe for us just these two different varieties. Well, we have a, a taller growing variety that we like a great deal. This is Plum Passion. This is also one of the new products we brought to the market. And you can see the maroon color yes. on the new growth. And so you get that color all year long. Uh, but that's a tall growing plant. And then we also have a selection. This is Harbor Dwarf. Mm. And that's a low mounding type form. So based on the type of landscape we're going to do today, then we need to choose which one you think is best. Well, um, I mean, I love the color here, but the, the low, the ground cover, looks like it's really going to be a winner for, for what we need it for. Super. Chip, I see one of my favorites over here, the Lantana. Uh, this one grows a little bit taller than the dwarf varieties I'm familiar with. Well, Gary, we chose this particular variety because it 
it grew in a lady's yard in Athens and lived through the two coldest temperature uh, winters that we've ever had back in 1983 and 1985. That's neat. Uh, it's very cold tolerant and one of the reasons that it that she was able to keep it even more cold tolerant is most people choose to prune their lantanas in the wintertime because it loses its leaves and and so they want to basically cover it with mulch to sure. winter protect it uh -huh. but the reality is is that on most lantanas and in this one in particular the stems are hollow so if you prune the stems and then the plant gets a lot of water over the winter which is normal for for this part of the world then what will happen is the cold doesn't kill the plant the plant actually rots at the roots because uh -huh. of the water Wow, so uh, this is one that we want, really want to keep the pruners off of in the, in the off season. Absolutely. Now, I guess you could still tip it in the warm season if you wanted to shape this guy a little bit, but... No problem at all. The more uh, you prune it, the more new growth you're going to create, the more blooms you're going to create. Thank you, Chip. I know also um, there's a few other varieties, new varieties, that you guys have to share with us. Absolutely. Gary, we've been talking about uh, new varieties and looking at new selections. This is one of the best new selections that we have. Mm. This is Kufia Itsy Bitsy, <laughs> and as you can tell by the particular product, the foliage is truly Itsy Bitsy. It, it really is a cute little plant. Now, I'm used to seeing the heather kind of sprawly or spreading. This looks tight and compact. That's the amazing part of this product. It requires basically no maintenance. You just plant it, water it, fertilize it, and it'll do its thing. But I mean, a little bit of shaping and pruning, you guys have tipped these into the, the little balls that they're in now, right? No, the only time this plant was ever cut was when we took the original cutting to produce it. Very nice. Now that you talk low maintenance again, this foots the bill. Absolutely. I, I love that nice compact growth habit. I look forward to getting plants to the site and just seeing how it's gonna make that look better. Chip, thanks for your help, your information, and all your expertise. What a beautiful fragrance. Uh, nothing quite says it like a rose. You know, it seems like every plant or tree has some pluses and minuses. And even the rose are, are that case too. I want to show you how the Parsons Juniper, uh, that bluish green look with the red rose is working really well. We've got some of those back behind me too. And then I've left an open space here. Don't know if, if you can see that on both sides. We need something somewhat permanent or green, I'll say year round. Uh, to help the roses when they lose their foliage and don't look so great in the winter. That's the way I like to do my roses is basically install them in the landscape rather than having a rose bed that doesn't look so great in the off season. Uh, I want to put them with something to carry them through left and right or on both sides uh, during that kind of dead winter months. I think you can appreciate the roses here on the left, on the left and right behind me and we've used an andina close to the pole. This is our island uh, for the driveway. And uh, take note of what we did not do. We didn't just put a hedge or some type of planting around the perimeter of the driveway and lock us out. No, we've got uh, two little beds that go with the, the walk there and this one that comes around the pole and encompasses it and touches the driveway. What I've done too is extended this across and we really need to pick up the grass in here as we, we've started to do. And I had Laura Petalum on the other side. I'm going to bring them in under here and fill this up so that we've got this little balancing act left and right uh, on the driveway. Now, uh, we've got some things installed close to the house. What do you say we look up there? Things are starting to develop here or shape up. And we've taken advantage of these five gallon Raphaelepsis, the Indian hawthorn here. Uh, because this is kind of a trend where close to the house uh, we can use something for a little more presentation and instant impact and this five gallon shrub does that. You see how it looks better already. It's almost like it's matured and these are close to their uh, final size too so that gives us a little bit of you know impact there. I want to kind of swing you this way a little bit to talk about this oak tree. Do you remember last time when we were drawing the bed lines, the concept or idea for uh, we didn't want this oak tree to be an island. We want to attach it somewhat to the driveway. And that leaves us a nice smooth curve for mowing and viewing and entering into the lawn this direction. Well, we'll see how this area shapes up. As far as the corner, we've used some uh, Clara japonica. 
on the other corner and here is a foundation plant, a beautiful glossy green leaf. And we can let these encroach over to the, a little bit over the height of the deck here. I think that's fine, especially with the size of this house. Let's kind of let them go a little bit. Down here over the Gulf Shore Nandina, red ruffle azalea underneath this beautiful, got a little ways to go, Savannah holly tree. Now we can show you with the red ruffle azalea how we're really trying to pull our carport, so to speak, together. Basically, uh, if you remember, we had them underneath a holly tree before we entered the carport and we've curved them out. Now you can see this line here, like a double line that comes toward you so that we're bringing them all together here. When these bloom, when they all have this red color instead of sporadically now, uh, the impact will be there, huh? Looking good. Hey, this is starting to shape up back here in the, the backyard or little courtyard area. Wanted to show you kind of reverse angle what this is looking like. Don't know if you can see the path that I'm walking on, but um, uh, gravel will be used to somewhat mimic or repeat the driveway gravel there, and that'll tie things in here. The homeowner wanted uh, a savanna garden, but I must admit, uh, not really sure what that is, but uh, Savannah, Georgia, some of the courtyardy type uh, looks and effects. So I've kind of begun our our creation back here are designed with a, a circular bed with the gravel walk that takes us around in a trip, so to speak, here. We'll see how this shapes up, but naturally the concept will be a more formal application to plants. Some of the lower hedging uh, we'll use to divide and sector things into a formal way. I uh, wanted to draw your attention to the Miss Huff Lantana that we've used around our formal looking full to the ground uh, hollies and that's starting to look good. A dwarf crepe myrtle is applied too. We've got a lot going on, but it's getting closer. We're getting closer all the time. Well, you've got to admit, things look a lot different out here. Do you remember when we first installed first installed the live oak trees out here, I drew these bed lines. We wanted some big smooth curves and flow. And now with the turf grass again installed, we have that. We're gonna bring you out here and, and just uh, do a few things. And I'd uh, like to just mention the plant types of varieties we have here. Nothing big and bulky. We've got the Laura Petalum for that beautiful burgundy color. The blue Pacific Juniper, actually that's Parsons. And in front there, the daylilies. Now, even with the ilex shillings and this beautiful red tip crepe myrtle, I like the way the color of the daylily bounces off of all of these. We're mixing things up. So we'll put a few things in place and see just how it looks. Alakazim, alakazam. No, it's not magic, but uh, there has a, been a lot that has happened here to this front entrance. I know that the cars are coming by at 50 or 60 miles an hour, but people are still looking, you know, People love to see things happen and see things change. And uh, actually we set these up at the end of the day. The guys just got them installed. So uh, we're into a new day here. I don't want you to think that all of a sudden, boom, it did happen in 10 minutes because it takes a while. But with the auger, it, was, it made this, the planting of the three gallons a little easier. I love this tight wad crepe myrtle. You like that rich red color. And you see our, our mimic or our balance there with the hollies too, the ilex shillings. We've got balance, even the daylilies. And come on and walk with me because um, the low junipers here too, the Parsons, oh, just a beautiful, nice color and contrast. Now we're lacking one thing and that's mulch still. That's all right. I've got a few things to show you down here. With our trees originally, again, uh, we're somewhat set for height. We, we don't need anything big or bulky. We want to really expose the columns and the wall. So we're changing up our color. And, and again, with the tight wad crepe myrtle, these will get a little bit taller. I love that mixing that with the blue juniper again. And some interesting notes here. We changed to this wood fencing, okay? Uh, in other words, I didn't run the stucco wall all the way out to the property line, which is fine. So. What we've done visually is basically, look at the razzleberry, how it goes through the fence here. 
and comes around and goes back through the fence also. Some low hosta in the front, but the evergreen giant border grass, or big blue I guess it is, goes through the fence too and makes that impression. The other side looks just about exactly the same. Now the back side, well, we have more room back here naturally. In the front, we did run out of real estate, so we've placed an additional bed. You know how we talk about one bed complements the next? And I, I think you'll be able to see that here with box, boxwood, Aztec grass, some of the fashion azaleas, and some of the red roses here under the magnolia tree. Oh, we've got that color going. And then look at the complementary beds here working together. So we back you up so you can see both of these beds. Uh, balance is important here. And uh, this bed, like we mentioned, is not only a complement to our wall planning, uh, but another little entry kind of. In other words, it's the last thing you see coming in, the first thing you see as you exit, and uh, provides that extra gate action, if you will. Well, enjoy uh, just another shot of this, and I'm gonna head close to the house. I don't know if you remember me talking about a, a fence here that'll go with a gate and it'll be open, uh, aluminum or wrought iron type look or appearance, turning the corner back here. Uh, let me show you the changes that have taken place. Um, they brought a, a crew in here and uh, we decided to use leftover bricks to border our little savanna garden. And they laid the gravel with plastic underneath and uh, it has shaped up tremendously. It really kind of sets the pace or the pattern, if you will. I mean, having the, the white lines drawn was one thing, but now this is visual. Our hardscape is in, and uh, it is meant to circulate us through the garden. That's the overall intent or purpose, and it seems to do that. So with the brick and the border, we, we've come in with a low hedge. This is a boxwood, a one gallon. Our goal here is to, again, create or mimic this circle or the feeling to circulate around. As you come down the steps, uh, I want you to walk, if you will, uh, through our garden in an early phase or stage of it, even though it seems to be kind of coming together. So we appreciate that much even. Over where you are now, there's four of the red roses that we had and we've tried to do a little triangular balance with them as far as color. Some here and then a group over to left and right side. And rather than just put the boxwood hedge all the way around the outside instead of the inside, we understand. But we don't want to lock ourselves totally out. So we have these little pockets or places where we have a little bit of hedging, but then we open up in some other areas so we can add some circulation. Again, we need a little time for some more setup and then we'll be ready to walk and talk again. Now, as we mentioned, our savanna garden has curves, but we have a, a straight fence coming here on the backdrop. So we've run a boxwood hedge, a small hedge, protruding through the fence. You see this white line is where the fence is probably gonna go, but we don't pay attention to that because we wanna draw a big horseshoe around. Matter of fact, as you continue to look at the boxwood hedge, it really comes and ends across the walk again over here, it starts or begins in this area. So we're creating this backdrop, so to speak, but low. And I wanna share a plant with you now. This uh, variegated iris, I think with the red roses, it's just gonna make a very nice statement here. Dan's setting a few up on the other side. And we'll have to adjust these, but uh, with the red rose, like I mentioned, Mm, nice color contrast, don't you think? We have had two solid days of plant setup and installation with about eight guys, counting myself, and uh, we're making it. We're there. Now, the mulch will come later, but it won't prevent us from looking at some befores and afters.
Well, that was a pretty fun project, wasn't it? Even the Savannah Garden came out to be pretty good looking. Well, I look forward to seeing you on another Designer's Landscape. Until then, I'm Gary Allen. So long.